Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Kiesel, and I want to talk today about one part of our system, the Selective Functional Movement Assessment. As you know, our system has a variety of different movement measurement tools, and, and I want to really first define assessment. Assessment means we're making a judgment. In other words, I need your professional judgment within this tool. Recognize, no matter what model you're using in rehabilitation, it's important that you know whether you're using or performing a screen, a test, or an assessment. They are different things, and it gets frustrating when we see that these three definitions get mixed around, so be sure you know which one you're using. If we use a very typical example in rehabilitation, let's take a back pain patient, right? We all see back pain patients. It's probably about 50% of what we do in outpatient physical therapy. It's very common, unfortunately, in, in sports medicine, athletic training, in the chiropractic world as well. So the first question, why are we even using this kind of an assessment? Why do we care about the SFMA in a back pain patient? Simple answer is regional interdependence. Regional interdependence is well known as contributing to patients with many dysfunction, including low back pain. So a problem away from the painful area, a dysfunction away from the painful area is likely or can be contributing to their pain. So we need a model, a very clean assessment model to address that. So why are we going to use uh, the SFMA for back pain patients? It's because we need to manage regional interdependence. Who? Well, honestly, we'll talk about back pain today, but it's pretty much every patient's going to need this because people come in with a variety of dysfunctions and we never really know how much one dysfunction can be contributing to their actual problem. So the back pain patients, what we'll talk about today and then when. That's, that's maybe the toughest part. If a patient comes into your office and they're in a very acute stage, they may have some leg symptoms, they have high levels of pain, maybe they're shifted, probably not the best day for the SFMA. Let's get them calmed down, follow your evidence-based algorithms and get them feeling better. And as they get feeling better and you're ready to go to more functional high-level movements, we need to get the SMA, SFMA involved right away. Patient comes in with lower level pain, maybe they're three, four out of 10, they're moving okay, they're having pain with particular uh, uh, tasks or activities makes sense to start the SFMA that day. So the SFMA involves a very structured process to get to the patient's movement diagnoses. First, we start with our top tier movements. We're going to look at seven global movements, neck, arm, spine. We're going to cover those movements and score them in a very, very simple way. We're going to score these movements as either functional, meaning it, it meets the goal that we want, or dysfunctional, it doesn't, and then painful or not. So it can be scored then in four categories, dysfunctional, functional, painful, non-painful. Extremely important when we're dealing in the assessment world to partition out those painful patterns from non-painful patterns. Once we get that done, that's about a two and a half minute investment. You've got a nice mapping of, of what these patterns look like. Then we're going to take the dysfunctional, non-painful patterns, the ones that don't hurt, but there's something wrong with the pattern, and we're going to break those out. We're going to break them out to come up with the diagnosis that will describe why the pattern is dysfunctional in the first place. Instead of just guessing and stretching something that might be tight or strengthening something that might be weak, we're going to actually come up with a movement diagnosis and tell you why that pattern is a problem or why it's dysfunctional. Once we've cleared those, then we'll go to the painful patterns, right? We don't want to stir people up and get, make the pain worse. We'll wait till we get the non-painful ones diagnosed first. So using the SFMA allows you to leave really no stone uncovered throughout your patient's uh, musculoskeletal system and be sure you're identifying all the mobility problems, all the motor control problems, so you can come up with a comprehensive rehabilitation plan. As you work through this plan, then as you get them back, they're getting ready to go back to activity, now we got to think about some other tools to get ready to do our discharge testing. So at discharge, I'm going to go back and do some higher level screening and testing, particularly for most patients. We really like to say, let's get a, a functional movement screen and a wide balance test to see where they are after we've gone through our assessment model. So I like to think about the screening and testing at discharge, simply checking our work, make sure they're okay to get back to what they like to do. So in short, the SFMA manages regional interdependence for basically all of your patients 
when they're ready, when their acute level is down enough that you can get into, their, into the system. So remember, we're going to manage regional interdependence, we're going to find their movement diagnoses, we're going to correct them, and then we're going to discharge them out with an appropriate FMS and Y balance test to prevent those problems going forward. For more information, visit functionalmovement.com.